Alright, in this video we are ready to set up the heart of or the framework for our graph search algorithm. Of course the purpose of ASTAR is to search a graph and find a path through that graph. Now we need to start with the basics. We need to start with a set of code that is going to allow us to walk through the path node network. In addition to that, we would also like to structure this code in a way that we can step through it node by node. Again, this the idea of this code is in the end, we will have a simple function we call that does everything it needs to in a single call, solves the graph, and finds a path. Now for the purpose of development, it would be very helpful to us if we could analyze what's happening step by step, since of course the algorithm is going to be looking at the state of the nodes, changing the state of the nodes, and possibly rechanging the state of the nodes as the path network is explored. So what we're going to do is we are going to build a graph search algorithm that's going to be broken up so that the algorithm progresses over discrete function calls. That means we will begin a search on the graph and then we will continue the search node by node with a separate method call. So of course all these things will need to be taken into account when we structure the state and the fields of the search itself. So let's go ahead and get things started. Over here in the navigation folder, let's add a new class and let's call this class a star step. Again, since this is going to be a version of the algorithm that we will implement that can be run in a step-by-step -step method. So we'll add this in, give it a second to load up, begin with our standard reconfiguring of the namespace. We also need a using statement because we're going to be using things from the XNA framework. So using Microsoft.XNA.Framework and the A star step class itself is going to be static. Since its job, as far as the outside world is concerned, is simply to house the methods necessary to run the algorithm. Now internally, the A star step class is going to need to maintain various pieces of state information. Since its action of running is going to be broken up across separate method calls, we're going to have to remember the calls that the, the algorithm was started with. And that is going to begin with the start and goal nodes. So we are going to make some static node fields, one for start, and then a second for goal. Since of course when we begin the uh, search, let me grab some spelling on goal. There we go. Since we need to tell where we are going to begin the search from using the start node, and we need to tell what node we're looking for so that later on in time as we explore enough nodes, we finally find the goal node, we need to know that that node is the node we're looking for so that we can terminate the search and find a path between the two nodes. All right, in addition to these two nodes, we are of course going to need our open list. So we'll drop in a static list of nodes which we will call the open list. We'll also turn around and instantiate a new node list. Now once again, the open list is going to be used as we advance node by node to find all of the neighboring nodes of the node we have just reached. That gets us ready for another iteration of the search loop to again advancing on to additional nodes. And basically we need to get the nodes added to the open list so that we know the next time around we need to pick a node from that open list in order to continue the search. All right, one more list of nodes we will need is the path. So we will make another static list of type node which we will call path. And this is of course used after we find the path between the nodes, we need a way of storing it so that it can be read back out. And since we're running this over multiple method calls, once again, we can't use the return of an individual method call to assemble the path since we don't know how many times it's going to run. So instead, we'll simply store it as a static field and then access it later once it's done. All right, one final thing that we'll need is going to be a simple variable, or rather field, to track whether or not we have begun searching. Since again, we will have one method that will start the search and another method that will continue the search, we need to remember what state we're in, whether or not we've already begun. So we will make a public static Boolean field called in progress. 
and we will explicitly initialize this to false, of course, since we begin in a state of not being in progress. All right, with these fields in place to track state as we progress, we're now ready to create our methods. The first method is going to be the begin method to kick off the search itself. So we will make a public static void method called begin. Begin is going to need to take in the start and goal nodes. So we'll take in a node for start and a node for goal. All right, inside of begin, the main thing we need to do here is get everything initialized and ready so that we can begin walking node by node. The very first thing we'll do is we'll make sure that we reset the state of the entire node network, just in case a previous search had already been run and had left scores and parenting information on the nodes. So we'll do this by looping through all of our nodes. So let's assemble a for each statement. So we will say for each node in. Now we need to go through all the nodes. Currently we have the actor list. So once again, we'll use link, grab the of type method to filter all of our actors and look only for node actors. So we'll say node in actor dot actors dot of type, <clears throat> excuse me, passing in the type we're looking for as node, open closing parenthesis to invoke the method and that should return a series of nodes we can iterate over using the for loop. So inside of the for each, we need to take each node and call its reset method. Since again, we'd packaged all of the state reset into one method call, that makes the code here a lot more simplistic. Also, I'm gonna pull out the curly braces from the for each loop since we only have a single statement inside of the for each. All right, the next thing we need to do is we need to remember our start and goal nodes since they're getting passed in via method parameters and we'll need them later as we're walking through each step of the algorithm. We need to copy these values over to our start and goal fields. Now, the interesting thing we've done here is we have a parameter that matches the name of a field. So here that this parameter is now hiding the name start from our field start. So to gain access to the real field, we'll actually have to address it through the name of the class. So that means we'll take a star step dot start and set that to be equal to the parameter start. And we can even see with the tooltips parameter node start and node a star step dot start. Now we'll duplicate this line because we need to remember the goal as well. So a star step dot goal will be set to goal. All right. Now that we've got our start and end nodes, we need to get the open list ready for use. So on this begin, let's make sure that we reinitialize the open list. In this case, we'll do this simply by recreating it. Open list will be equal to a list of node. Now, once we have our new open list, we need to initialize the open list by adding the first node into it. Again, it's, it's as though we have to prime the open list because again, the open list tells us when we're ready to advance to a new node in the path node network, we grab that new node from the open list. So to get everything started, a node has to exist in the node, or excuse me, in the open list. So open list to, or rather to the open list, we will add the start node. So then when we decide what node to select out of the open list, the only node we'll have will be start, and that's why we'll start all of our search from the start node itself. All right, with all of our state set up and ready to go, we will mark ourselves in such a state by setting in progress to true. All right, that takes care of begin, gets everything kicked off. Now we need to write a continue method. So once everything gets set up, we can then begin walking node by node. So we will make a public static void method called continue. And continue is not going to take in any parameters since all of the state information has now been set up and is already handled internal to the A star step class. Now the first thing we'll do is we'll do a check and make sure that we do have a search in progress, just to make sure that we don't call these methods out of order. So we'll make an if statement and say if not in progress, then we will simply return. 
and avoid calling anything else, or rather running anything else, here inside of this continue method. All right, the next thing we'll do is we'll make sure that we have a sane scenario set up with our open list. If we don't have any nodes in the open list, we won't be able to run. And again, this is more of just a protection against running it incorrectly by the way that we call our methods. So we're going to say if open list dot count is equal to zero, then we will return. Another thing that this will allow for us is a way to terminate the search because once we have reached the goal node and we're no longer adding nodes to the open list or if we have exhausted all of the nodes in the graph we won't have any more to add so if we ever get into a condition where the open list is empty that means that we have completed the search we've either found the condition we're looking for or we have exhausted all nodes that can be searched all right moving on from here we're now ready to pick the node to begin exploring so again, to pick this node, we're going to look into the open list, and we're also going to store the node that we pick in a local variable to refer to it later. So we're going to make a node called current. And current, since in this case, we have not yet come up with any intelligent way of having our algorithm decide what direction to progress into the network, we're going to begin with a very simple way of selecting nodes. We're simply going to grab the very first node that appears in the open list, regardless of anything else that appears. So what this means is when we get this search algorithm working, it's not going to be efficient. We're going to be able to find paths, but we're not making any decisions on why. We're just grabbing the first available node in any direction. All right, now that we have grabbed a current node, we've now addressed it, so we need to pull it back out of the open list. So we will tell our open list to remove the current node. Now since we have now moved to this node, we are also going to add it to the closed list to make sure that it doesn't get considered in the future. Because at this point, it's made its way onto the open list and has been selected from the open list as the current node current node, you can almost envision this as we are the search explorer that has now decided to move on to this node, it has been fully considered, and now it is going to be closed. So current is going to be marked as closed. So closed will be set to true. This is also important to make sure that we don't run into any kind of infinite loop scenario. We mark what we've already addressed, and we never run into a loop then where we re-explore already explored nodes. All right, now we need to do a check. Since we have picked a new current node, we need to see if we have arrived at the goal yet. So we will do an if statement to say if current is equal to goal, then we found the goal node. And that means we're ready to terminate the search. So what we'll do is we'll take in progress and we will set it to false. And we will then immediately return so we don't attempt to do any further searching. And if we do any further calls to continue, we'll note that in progress is false and avoid attempting to continue the search. All right, if the current node was not the goal node, that means that we do need to continue searching. So at this point in time, we have a current node. That means we've decided the next step to progress into the node graph. Now we need to look at all the nodes that are neighboring the current node. Basically, we need to look into that node, check his connected list, and see all of the nodes that connect to the current node. So to do this, we'll assemble a for each loop, and we will say for each neighbor, so for each neighbor node in the current node's connected list. So what this will do is let us walk through all of the neighboring nodes, neighboring the node that we have selected. Now, as we inspect these nodes that surround the current node, the first thing we'll do is check and see if they are already closed. Because if they've closed, we've already traveled to that node, and we don't need to consider it any further. So we'll do a check and say if neighbor.closed, then we will simply continue in our loop. So we'll drop in a continue statement to simply advance to the next iteration of the loop. Now, if the neighbor node was not closed, then we need to check and see if it's on the open list. So we'll create an if statement and say if not open list dot contains 
then we'll pass in the current neighbor being inspected. So if the neighbor node is not on the open list, that means that it has not been explored before. Basically, we're saying, all right, we have found a brand new node that we've never seen before. So what we'll do is we will add it to the open list so that in the future it can get considered as a possible node to advance to. So we'll take our open list. We will add this neighbor node to it. So open list dot add neighbor. Now that we've added it to the open list, we need to remember how we got to this node because it's possible that this node that we're currently adding will in the future become part of a path back to the beginning. Of course, the path itself is going to be solved by walking from our goal node all the way back to our start node using all of the parenting indicators. Basically, walk, just walk parent by parent and that will trace a nice path back to the beginning. Now, in order to have this path, we need to make sure that we parent our nodes as we address them. So we're going to take neighbor and set its parent to be equal to current. So basically, you could read this as saying, we got to this neighbor from this current node. All right, with all of this in place, we should now be ready to test things out. So let me build, make sure that this code gets saved out. All we have are some simple warnings of things that aren't being used yet. So we can move over to our scene editor, which appears to be off the page. So let's jump over to scene editor and let's move down to the keyboard input section. So here we have the code right after we had set up our X key. Let's set up a series of two different keys that will allow us to begin and continue a node search. We'll use the P key to begin a search and we will use the space key to continue a search. In the case of the P key, we will also check and see if we have two nodes since we're going to let the user select a start and end node from inside of the scene editor. So we will create an else if statement and then inside of this if statement, we'll check our key and see if the key is equal to uh, keys.p and we will also check and see if we have enough things selected. We'll say end actor dot selection dot count is greater than or equal to two. Now what we need to do is grab both of these selected actors, cast them to node, and make sure that they are in fact nodes. So let's begin with the first. We will make a local node variable called start, and the start node will be equal to actor dot selection sub zero, so the first node selected cast it as a node. Next, we will grab the last element selected and we will set that as our goal node. So we'll make a variable node goal is set to actor dot last selected. Again, cast it as node. Now, if both of these nodes are not null, that is if start is not equal to null, and goal is not equal to null. I'm grabbing a bit of spelling. Now we have our if statement. So if we have two nodes, a start and a goal, then we are ready to begin running our A star step. So let's take and look at the A star step class and make a call to begin. For begin, we need to tell it the start and goal nodes. So we'll pass in start and goal. Now begin is only going to initialize things. We're actually going to, in addition to beginning, run the first iteration of the search. This will make sure that the first node gets considered, added to the close list, and that way upon beginning, we'll immediately see values light up. Otherwise, if we just did the begin and don't begin setting the state on nodes, we would hit P and see nothing until we hit space. If we advance the first step in addition to hitting P, it makes a good visual indicator that we successfully began the search. So we're also going to grab a star step and make one call to continue. So we advance into the first node, which is the start node. All right, now that we can kick off a node search, we need to be able to continue a node search. So we'll add an additional else if statement, and we will say else if key is equal to keys dot space. 
then we will check and see if we are in progress with a node search. So we'll say if a star step dot in progress, and if so, we will call a star step dot continue. All right, with everything in place, our code now builds. So let's run it and try it out. Let's do a simple navigation from this node, holding control, clicking on a second node, to this one. Now if we hit the P key, we can see that the original starting node gets marked and added to the closed list, because basically he became the current node. After that, we looped through all the nodes that were in his connected list, and we considered those his neighbors. So a walkthrough that would be the nodes all across the sides here. We can see that each of those nodes, of course, they were not on the open list, since the open list was at that moment in time empty. Each of these nodes got added to the open list, and their parent got set to the current node, which is the node we started at. Of course, all of their weights are zero since we're not considering scores just yet. We just want to see a basic search framework in action. All right, so now that we know that this one is no longer on the open list, these are on the open list, we're going to pick whichever of these happen to get added to the open list first. So if we hit the spacebar in advance, we can see that this node would have appeared first on the open list. So he gets considered, he gets set to the current node. You can see since we've already gone through a full iteration of the loop, he's also added to the, to the closed list. Now, in addition to the nodes that were already opened, he found two new neighbors that were not already on the open list. So these two nodes get added to open and get parented. Now, if we advance again, we can see that the next node on the open list was one of the original neighbors to the first node. He had some neighbors, so that those get considered added to the open list and parented. Now, if we continue hitting space, you can see we walk node by node, expanding outward until we finally find the goal node and the search basically terminates. We don't, have, we don't yet have the path generation in place, so it's hard to see the exact moment that it ends. The only thing indicating that we're done searching is the fact that nothing happens when we hit the space bar. But at this point, what we've done is we have searched a series of nodes, we have found the goal node, even though we're not visually indicating it yet, and we can see that there are now connections between these. So if we wanted to follow the final pathfinding logic, we can see that the goal node has a parent, so we can walk to his parent. We can see that that node has a parent, and that happens to be the start node. So we have successfully created a path, or well, shortly have uh, created a path between these two nodes. You also know that this is definitely not an optimal path, as a straight line would have been a lot easier. But again, the logic for selecting a new node on the open list is just to grab the first one. So this is a very blind search as it's going through and looking for nodes. So with this now, we can see, once again, just to do a quick review of what a star step is doing, we could see that after we begin and get all of our state initialized, we grab a current node, check to see if it's the goal, loop through all of the neighboring nodes, adding them to the open list, and setting their parent, or simply ignoring them, because you notice when we were running the code, on the first run, we set five different nodes as open nodes. On later runs, we only set maybe two or three additional ones because some of the, this node's neighbors were already on the open list. So with this now, we have a framework in place. We have a node search that can search the path node graph and end up resulting in a goal node. So with that, that's going to wrap up this video.